this is a movie that really, really gets its claws into you if you allow yourself to be taken on the journey and go in with zero expectation. Now, that's not to say that the movie isn't deserving of high praise. Quite the opposite. You've seen from the thumbnail, I'm saying it right here at the top of the review, this is a contender for movie of the year, this movie, for me personally. Now, I've seen a lot of critique online about this film saying oh it's civil bore nothing happens bore off is what i say back to you if 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 you fall into that category because while this may not have the big bombastic flair of something like a michael bay film kudos to you if you like that stuff um it's not for me this is a far more subdued personal journey but also a huge 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 meta commentary about us as a media consuming people the story of civil war is really simple you've got in a, in a weird mad world it's quite hard to wrap your head around but uh the story the story of civil war is is a really quite simple one albeit mad one to understand because you've got the states of California and Texas have somehow come together to create a separatist government. And that separatist government is aiming to overthrow the existing established U.S. government. The reasons for this are very, very simple. The U.S. government, bad. Now, the movie's not taking such an unnuanced approach as to say U.S. government, bad. It's not that on the nose. But through very, very clever exposition, dialogue, and minimalist exposition, I should say, it lets you know that the current president and the current regime in charge have committed great atrocities against the U.S. people. And where the movie is so clever with all this is that it acknowledges the death on both sides and it refuses vehemently to take a side in this argument. Now, what's wonderful about that, because it sounds crazy, to say that, well, why is the movie not taking a side if the US president has committed atrocities? Well, because in return for that, atrocities are also committed by the states of California and Texas in their coalition government, right? Now, as far as suspending disbelief goes, that's as far as you have to do, because I know in a real world the idea of California and Texas coming together, yeah, those are two states that are quite wide apart in terms of their values and beliefs, from what I know as a Brit. Um, but once you get over that, in and you don't need to dwell on the fact that, well, California and Texas could never join together. Get over that. Because what the story does, it sets up this premise whereby you've got this regime in charge and a regime trying to overthrow them. That's the... the it's almost background noise. Because what the movie does that's so clever is the movie decides to center on centralist characters. In this case, those centralist characters happen to be war reporters and war photographers, played in this case by Kirsten Dunst and by Wagner Mora, he of Narcos fame. They are on fine form in this movie, absolutely stellar performances top to bottom. And where the movie is so jarring for a lot of people, but that's where I actually thought it was quite wonderful, is because it doesn't take a side... And that's the critique it has on the greater population of our world. Because we're so used to being either conservative or liberal, Tory or Labour. It doesn't matter where you are. We're so used to being on a side and just taking sides. That's very much the onus of us as humanity. And in that sense, the movie is a huge critique of our firm stances, our extremes on everything and our inability to find a central. And... I praise it for that, man, because it's actually quite scary when you look at something like this, when there's death being committed all around, and it's even, it's really jarring when you're watching a movie for there to not be a villain, so to speak, and certainly not to be following what you would call heroes, because the onus of Kirsten Dunst in this movie, she's... Boot, it's boots on the ground. She's been in bad places. Her wartime photography has made her see the absolute worst of humanity on both sides of the political scale. And she goes on this journey with the president of the United States about to be overthrown, bringing along 
a young girl with her who wants to be just like her, an aspiring wartime photographer who's not suffering from PTSD, who's not jaded yet. And obviously things go wrong because the journey they go on, while, as I said at the top of this review, not having the big bombastic moments that a Michael Bay movie has, it's all beautiful character exposition pieces there's a stunning sniper scene for instance where Wagner Moore returns to the soldiers who were you know we're seeing it from the point of view of the snipers where he says who are you shooting at and the guys very much make it clear that we don't know but they're trying to kill us so we're trying to kill them and it's chilling man the neutrality of it all and then you come to scenes with Jesse Plemons and I'm not going to say anything more that's harrowing Every single scene that they come into, while not being big and in your face, at least not big and in your face visually, it gets you right in the feels, man, because it's chilling. It just goes to show that as a race, and that's, I guess, why the movie's so clever, because as a race, the movie very much shows that, look, we are one bad leader. We are one wrong decision. We are one extremist uprising away from plunging into total chaos. And you can kind of copy and paste that ethos onto what's going on in the world at the moment. Now, the movie does tread a careful path of never bringing to light what's going on in the world at the moment, which I applaud it for. But it is chilling, man. It is really chilling to think that we are you know, that close to being in trouble and to really plunging into civil war. It's a thinker. It really, really does make you think, Jesus, are we really destined for this sort of ending? Are we are we, are we this far gone? Are, are we that polarized all from each other that we are, that, we're, that, that we end up in such extremes and that the slightest thing could see our world come crumbling down? Um, look, I, I, I'll say this. I, I, I'll say this. I think, whew, I, I think it comes as no surprise that civil war should draw controversy, as it wishes us and its central characters in discomfort, with no warning, no invitation to look away, and with no tribe that that extreme that we have to belong to something, no tribe to cling to and to tell us what's right and wrong. And that's its magic. Civil War is an abrasive and uncomfortable film. Oh, do you know what? I'm Bear with me. I'm going to redo this and turn this into a reel. <laughs> um, Civil War is... Civil War is an uncomfortable and abrasive film, not because it fully subscribes to any particular ideology, but because it doesn't. And we as a people hate not having clearly defined sides to root for or against or media that doesn't perfectly align with our worldview so we can walk out of the theatre confidently knowing we're a good person. It really takes that central role and it just holds a mirror up at you and it says, this is what we're moving towards. And to that end, the movie cannot be considered anything than an absolute, all but sombre, tour de force um it's it's in contention for one of my movies of the year if i had to pick negatives at it because i've really praised it if i had to pick negatives with it i would say that it is a little bit of a one-trick pony you know you've got your the route that the characters are going on and it is very much just scene worst of humanity move on scene Worst of humanity. Move on. Scene. Copy, paste, copy, paste. It has got a bit of a copy and paste vibe to it to the degree that towards the end, I did get a bit like, hmm, I wonder if this movie's quite long or not. It felt a bit long and it's not a long movie. Um, so I guess maybe suffers from some pacing issues. But beyond that, oh, oh, one thing I forgot to praise. Jesus Christ. What I love that they've done here. What Alex Garland, the director Alex Garland, has done is they have gone back to basics with the cinematography. It's simple, powerful, Steven Spielberg-esque cinematography and visual choices. Picture in picture, frame in a frame, using lens flares when needed. Using color grading to convey a certain tone and a certain message. All very subliminal stuff and it works 
brilliantly. So with that said, man, I can't see how I could give Civil War anything less than an unabashed 9 out of 10. It was so close. There were points when I was watching it where I was like, this movie's goated. This movie's going to be movie of the year. It, it It's in the discussion for movie of the year. It absolutely has to be in discussion for movie of the year. Um, but yeah, those are my thoughts on it. I think it is an incredible achievement. I think Alex Garland, I wasn't the biggest fan of his follow-up to Ex Machina, Annihilation. I thought Ex Machina was a work of art. I think he's found his voice again with this. Um, I have a feeling with all of the big blockbusters like Godzilla and Kung Fu Panda and all that that's out there, at least in the UK, because I know in the US you get it earlier, but all that's out in the UK at the moment, it, this is going to be missed. I implore you, if you've watched till the end of this review, please go and seek out this movie. It's genius. And once you've seen it, I want to know what you've thought of it. So please leave your thoughts and your comments down below. Uh, there should be another video up here for you to watch and a subscribe button right down below. So please go ahead and do all of that goodness. If movies are your jam, hit that subscribe. And I will see you guys very soon on another video right here on the Silver Screen Dudes. Bye for now.